Returning to the story that began 13 years prior, legendary filmmaker Toby Hooper brings us the fantastically gory, ferociously funny, and infinitely controversial sequel to his 1974 original, 1986's infamous The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. <laughs> The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 is another one of those horror movies, like the original film, that is just a part of me, burned into my very DNA, so to speak. Not to say that I've been watching it for as long as the original film, but almost just as long. And like that first film, this movie is simply ingrained in my mind. Now, I think I need to start this off by addressing the comedic aspects of this film. And although the original film had a lot of tiny little comedic moments, which I never really picked up on because the film was so damn shocking to me as a child, part two seems to take the comedy and dial it up to 10 notches. Because this movie is one hell of a cartoony, frenzied, funny ride straight into the bowels of hell, and is probably the farthest away from the first film, tonally, that Toby Hooper could have gotten, and intentionally so. With that said, this movie is not a flat-out comedy. It is definitely more of a horror film than a comedy film, as it should be, and definitely has some truly scary stuff and intense scenes on display within its runtime. But there's a very cartoony Fellini vibe throughout the film, where a lot of incidental stuff is legitimately funny, but there's also some really crazy stuff happening here regarding some really crazy characters and situations that are, from the point of view of the characters, probably horrifying, but to us as the viewers, come off as either funny, goofy, downright weird, or a combination of all three. For example, LG spitting all the time and calling Stretch Darlin is funny. LG! Lefty going insane and doing this? Or this? I'm the Lord of the Harvest. Who's that? Is also funny. Extremely funny, actually. But in a that's so crazy it's funny kind of way. Then you just have the downright weird and abstract stuff. Like this old chainsaw dealer going wild as he watches Lefty testing out the chainsaws. I mean, look at this dude. <laughs> See what I mean? This is the tone of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. It's a horror comedy, but it's horror in the most horror of ways, and it's comedy in the most insane ways possible. I think what I'm trying to say is this. If you're looking for a movie with a similar tone to the original, this is not it. But it also somehow feels perfectly in line with the first film, and of the same world, if that makes any sense whatsoever. The film isn't really a direct sequel to the original, taking place 13 years later and in a completely different area, but it does follow the same continuity and does exist in the same world, with the events of the first film mentioned from time to time, and one of our main characters directly related to the characters of the first. However, this story focuses more on a local radio DJ known as Stretch, played by the magnificent Caroline Williams who aspires to be more than a simple disc jockey. Her partner in crime is a guy called LG, played in hilarious fashion by the late and great Lou Perryman, who definitely has the hots for Stretch. But it becomes clear quite quickly that she is just not into him in that way. But you have to hand it to the guy for never giving up. God damn it. In the middle of a routine night at the radio station, Stretch receives a few annoying phone calls from a pair of drunk yuppies 
who are insistent on staying on the phone with her and talking nonsense, before soon encountering the Sawyer family on the highway. A high-speed massacre ensues, and not only do both of these yuppies meet their fate at the hands of a manic Leatherface, but Stretch and LG hear it all go down. Although the scene is crazed and fast-paced and somewhat dreamlike, the appearance of Leatherface sort of comes out of nowhere, and the violence that ensues is a great taste of things to come for the rest of the film. And although the scene is executed in somewhat hokey fashion, intentionally no doubt, the events that actually transpire within the context of the film are inarguably terrifying for both Stretch, LG, and certainly the yuppies themselves, whose lives ended in grisly fashion at the hands of the chainsaw-wielding, skin-mask-wearing psychopath, a great contrast to the comedy of Chainsaw 2. The next morning, we're finally introduced to our secondary hero, Lefty Enright, a former Texas Ranger and a man clearly on a mission to hunt down the Sawyer family, as he is revealed to be the uncle of both Sally and Franklin from the original film. Lefty, played in glorious fashion by the man, the myth, the legend, the late and great Dennis Hopper, shows up at the scene of the previous night's murder, where the wreck of the vehicle remains, but the bodies of the two yuppies have mysteriously been taken. After noticing peculiar chainsaw marks in one of the doors, Lefty puts two and two together and knows this can only mean one thing. The Sawyers are here. This is how a sequel is done right. It changes up the formula, but keeps the core of the original intact. Stretch and Lefty are new characters, but Lefty has a direct line to the original film and has a legitimate beef with the Sawyer clan. Therefore, we not only have a new direction for the film that isn't a simple Xerox of the first, but we also have that conduit from the original to the sequel. And with such an eclectic and strong performer such as Dennis Hopper and the role of Lefty, you know we're in for some crazy stuff. Stretch eventually goes to Lefty for help, hellbent on doing something real, aka finding out who committed these atrocities she recorded the other night, and Lefty, reluctantly, agrees to join her on her quest, knowing full well that this quest began for him years prior to the murder of those two yuppies. He convinces Stretch to play the recording on her radio show, live on the air, in order to not only convince the general public and the police that something weird is going on, but to also hopefully flush out the assailants themselves. Well, it works, much to the dismay of Stretch and the detriment of LG, because the station is soon under siege by the Sawyer clan, specifically Chop Top, played brilliantly by Bill Mosley, and Leatherface himself, this time played by Bill Johnson, who actually does an excellent job in the role. When all is said and done, the station is ransacked, LG is supposedly murdered and taken by the family, and Stretch, after having a very peculiar encounter with Leatherface, nicknamed Bubba in this film, is spared by the skin-masked madman. With Lefty nowhere in sight, Stretch is forced to jump in her vehicle and follow Chop Top's truck closely, hell-bent on finding out where these psychopaths reside. In one of the film's best production design choices, we soon find ourselves at the main setting for the remainder of the film, an abandoned amusement park-like property once called Texas Battleland, which has become the residence of the Sawyer family a place they most likely fled to after the events of the original film. It's here that Lefty and Stretch are reunited, and after falling through the ground and into the underground lair of the Sawyers, it's up to Lefty, chainsaws in hand and holster, to save Stretch, defeat the Sawyers, and save the day, Texas Ranger style. I know I touched on this film's absolutely insane nature, but this is really where it shifts into high gear madness, and the film's incredible visual style, production design, and the fantastically played characters really have a chance to shine. The pace is fast, the editing is punctual, the moody atmosphere is on full beautifully macabre display. Everything about this portion of the film feels like an increasingly volatile acid trip that just builds and builds and builds, with seemingly no end in sight. 
the set design here is just on another level entirely. I mean, it just blows my mind how detailed and spooky this place is. As far as the gore effects and nastiness goes, Tom Savini shines here as well. I mean, the gore in this film is just gross in the best way possible. It almost makes you feel like you need to take a shower after watching this thing. After reuniting with a half-dead and very skinless LG, who succumbs to his wounds shortly thereafter, Stretch traverses the maze of this underground lair, trying to find her escape while dodging the encroaching Sawyer family members. Meanwhile, Lefty brings it all down, Bring it all down! finds some guts, and is reunited with his nephew Franklin in what plays out as a very somber, disturbing, and sad scene. And the dying flashlight is the icing on the cake of this morbid scene. Franklin. The family soon comes across a stretch, with Drayton berating Bubba for not finishing the job he was assigned to which was supposed to result in Stretch's death back at the radio station. But Leatherface, in this movie, is crushing hard on the radio DJ and seems to be physically infatuated with Stretch, and that's putting it lightly. Bubba's got a girlfriend! After a slew of crazy escapades, a confrontation with Grandpa Sawyer, and the arrival of Lefty Enright, the Chainsaw sequel concludes with a tabletop chainsaw battle between Lefty and Leatherface, a chase sequence with Chop Top and Stretch, and the suicide bombing of Drayton Sawyer. Yes, you heard that right. After Drayton is injured by Lefty's chainsaw, he decides to use one of Nubbin's grenades to blow himself to smithereens, seemingly taking Lefty, who has now put a chainsaw completely through Leatherface's stomach, and Leatherface himself, along with him, in an explosion that sends smoke pouring out of the underground lair. By the way, Nubbins is the mummified corpse of the hitchhiker from the first film, and the brother of Chop Top. Upon coming across a mummified grandma and stealing her chainsaw, Stretch, going full beast mode, kills Chop Top, declares victory, and dances maniacally at the top of the structure, not unlike Leatherface's rage dance at the end of the first film. I mean, what a ride this film is. Completely unlike the first film, but so much like the first film at the same time. And unless you've seen the films, it's hard to really understand what I mean by that. The film definitely looks, sounds, and feels different than the first, and they have quite dissimilar tones, but they both feel a part of the same world, the same continuity, the same characters, just presented in this dreamlike, drug-induced coma pit of insanity and I love every minute of it. Everyone involved in this film brought their A-game, and Toby Hooper, as much flack as he caught for the sudden tonal change between the first film and this sequel, was hopefully proud of it, because this film is absolutely revered by fans, more now than it ever has been in the past, and I hope he really got a clear view of that before he passed away back in 2017. With that said, a big rest in peace to Toby Hooper, as well as Lou Perryman, who was murdered back in 2009, God rest his soul, Dennis Hopper, who passed away in 2010, and Jim Sedow, who passed away in 2003, and Kit Carson, who passed away in 2014, who wrote and rewrote the film dozens of times based on the continuing budget cuts. I haven't touched on this yet, but I seriously need to point out how amazing Jim Sedow was in this film, returning to the role of the cook from the first film, or finally named in this film as Drayton Sawyer, the patriarch of the Sawyer clan, and an absolute legend of a character when it comes to horror movies. And he works extremely well within the Sawyer trio on display in this film. Dennis Hopper also kills it in the role as Lefty, and his performance is often overlooked, it sickens me, but it's a fantastic performance, and it deserves far more credit than it gets. Caroline Williams is also excellent in the film, and she's probably the best heroine out of the entire Chainsaw franchise. I implore you to see Chainsaw 2. It is every bit as good as you've heard, and if you've heard anyone denounce the film or say that it's bad, 
Just know that they are completely full of it. Chainsaw 2 is a masterpiece, in and of itself, and the only true Chainsaw sequel of the entire franchise. There. I said it. Also, I forgot to mention this. So you know the movie is bound to be awesome. Some of you may not agree, but this sequel is not only one of the best horror sequels ever made, but is also one of the best horror movies ever made in general. In and of itself, a fantastic journey into the bowels of insanity, fantastically written and directed, well acted, great production design and effects, some truly funny moments, some truly scary moments, and all in all, an unforgettable cinematic experience. I'm not joking when I say this, and I will argue with anyone who says otherwise. Toby Hooper's The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 is not a 10 out of 10. It's beyond that. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 is a crystal skull. 